almost half of adults go through body shame because of their hair, their weight, and even the size of their feet. A survey done last year with 2,000 adults, 56% complain of being body shamed. Today on the podcast, we discuss overcoming body shaming. My name is Anen Chibu Osiako. This is Two Madness Podcast. After this break, I'll introduce my guest. Welcome back. This is Two Madness Podcast, and my guest is Dufie Boache. Yeah, Dufie is my, it's a family. Yeah, we go way back. Dufie, welcome. Thank you so much. Peter. I miss you. I miss you too. I'm so glad to be here. Yeah, you're part of this journey when we started this podcast, and I'm so happy you're on camera now. So today, I'm, I want to discuss this dear topic in my heart, body shaming. I've been body shamed before. With my, I didn't feel the impact when same sex body shaming. Because mm-hmm. guys, we tease ourselves. So if body shaming, I'm too skinny. I don't, I don't really care. But I got that feeling when one lady body shamed that I was too skinny. And that day, it, 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 got, it got me. I kept wondering that, ooh, so all along, me, I felt so comfortable in my skin, but somebody is body shaming me. A pussy set is body shaming me, which suddenly my conscience pulls this trigger, and I start feeling kind of inadequate. And I was like, oh, okay. So people constantly go through body shaming because my when guys see me, I feel like it's it's normal. Mm-hmm. So people go through body shaming. This is what they go through on the regular. Yeah. So let's discuss this topic: overcoming body shaming. And the statistics are are crazy. So do feel welcome. Thank you so much. Peter. So when I threw this topic to you, that let's just body shaming. What was your first impression? Well, I've always been a victim of body shaming. Mm-hmm. I think for as far as I can remember, because I've always been plump. I've always been quite big. But growing up, I didn't know there's a term to it, okay? Until I got to, let's say, maybe uni, mm-hmm. uni, where a friend of mine said, oh, that's phobia when I... And told about an incident I had. So I walked to this place to buy food, and this man says, I, and she's like, Why can't you away, Jimmy? Sorry for my Wow. Language. And I was so overwhelmed by that. I was so sad. So my friend was like, That's fat phobia. I'm like, What is fat phobia? <laughs> okay, so I went to search and I'm like, Okay, there's body shaming. Um, so now we definitely have a theoretical meaning to it. Mm-hmm. So it's basically passing derogatory comments or mocking somebody's physical appearance. That's just the definition to body shaming. And it happens in many ways and mm-hmm. in many angles. Mm-hmm. You know, it could be your size, it could be your your height, your complexion, your hair, anything at all that people pick on. And sometimes it's even they make it look like it's an issue of negligence. Yeah. You look at a particular kind of way because you're not doing A, B, C, D. <laughs> so, yeah, it's very, very tormenting. Yeah, true. Tormenting is not even um, word enough to describe it. It's very, very tormenting and it makes you feel very inadequate, as you said in your intro. Yeah, true. So, psychologically, why do you think people feel that comfortable to body shame others? You know, I have come to learn in life that it is busy for us. It's easy for people to pass comments about people's bodies because they have this image of how somebody else should look, forgetting that they also have their own flaws and shortcomings. Mm-hmm. Nobody has a one hundred percent perfect body. Yeah. Um. Some time ago, I watched this interview between Tara Banks and Beyonce, and everybody thinks Beyonce is the epitome of perfect right yeah. body but beyonce says i hate my legs they're so slim mm. i'm like whoa even beyonce has mm-hmm. something she's she feels inadequate about so people tend to rub their inadequacies on others mm-hmm. to say you have to look a particular way you have to do this and do that there are times that uh i may buy a bowl of kinky right and somebody said isn't kinky come on you're going to gain so much weight wow. but kinky is a normal human being's food yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay yeah. so yes as people's own personal emotions and inadequacies about themselves, they rub it out on others. Mm -hmm. So it's a reflection like a mirror. Let me talk to that person about what is inadequate about this and keep mine to myself, which is terrible. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. So what are the stacks on body shaming? You know, um, sometimes, um, as I was saying, it is hard to put numbers to people's feelings because Mm -hmm. you may think that, okay, 20% 20% of mm-hmm. the youth are feeling some type of way, but then you've not asked 
people are not opening up. Mm-hmm. As I said, and I didn't even know this was like a topic mm-hmm. for discussion answers in uni. So there are many young people globally mm-hmm. that feel like they are being body shamed. And body shame, we don't say that but it's an abuse because it's bullying. Yeah. Yeah. You are bullying the person. It's exactly. an abuse, you know, orally. So um I think definitely um from some statistics that I saw, fifty six percent of like two thousand people mm-hmm. I saw that mm-hmm. um feel like they are body shamed and it really has great consequences on people. Yeah. So what are the major uh contributors to body shaming? The major ones? Well, um, at one is people's you know personal inadequacies rubbing the out on people mm-hmm. against society. Society gives people the room mm-hmm. to do that. Um, I'll share this personal experience. Right? So, personally, I I I am always being body shamed by my family, and I was telling my friend this lately. Like when we go somewhere with my mom, especially, I think she's unhappy. Someone doesn't raise on the top of me being fat. If people don't say it, she doesn't feel comfortable. She will raise it. And and she thinks it's funny. Mm-hmm. She just said, oh, she's been so big all her life. But it gives people room to disrespect me. Mm-hmm. Okay. So recently, even this dress that I'm wearing, we went to this seamstress. And my mom was like, yeah, she's always been big. Da, 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 da. And the lady was like, oh, yeah, she's been I'm actually a bit scared of her. She's that big. Wow. And so that supposed fear... You no, know, resulted in she making a dress two times my size, but she took my measurements because she's not using the numbers on the paper. She's using but her her presumed numbers. Certainly. So society also creates that you know mm-hmm. room for people to body shame others. Again, um, this is rare, but sometimes the way you carry yourself can also give people room to do that. Mm-hmm. People are going to do that regardless. Yeah. But then it's the the response. Mm-hmm. So I thought people come to me and say. They sell maybe supplements. They'll be like, do you want to lose weight? i am be like, no. Maybe I want to, but then what if you see a stranger and ask that? Mm-hmm, 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 yeah, mm-hmm. so my sharp response of no ends the conversation. Mm-hmm. So they're not able to continue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. With your mom, do you think that is it's, uh, her defense mechanism for people not to uh, quickly body shame you? So she tried to start the whole conversation too. Well, <laughs> it won't be taking the situation if it's that, but then I think genuinely, maybe I think she feels like people are going to start a conversation anyway, so she needs to instigate the conversation, mm-hmm. and so yes, and trust me, it, it has come from that angle. Yeah, anybody in the world can be against my body, but not my mother mm-hmm. or not my father or exactly. my sibling because yes, being big like I'm, I'm taking this more from um, being big. Angle, but there are many ways of body shaming. But I say that because being big, I've had people that give me unsolicited advice. Mm-hmm. I know that it's unhealthy to be overweight, and I'm not saying we should shun that subject. Yeah. But it has to be spoken about, you know, meticulously, mm-hmm. non judgmentally. Yeah. Okay. But I have had people say all manner of things to me because of my body, making it look as if I don't have a mind of my own. Yeah. But I do. Yeah. yeah. When was the last time I body shamed? Uh, I think two weeks ago. The yeah. the, the Sintra story. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, okay, okay. Yes. So that's the whole narration. Yes. Oh. yes. But did you confront her? My mom? No, they are seamstress. So, well, I, I didn't really confront her, but what mm. I said was, um, so as I said, because of this body shaming, she ended up making a dress three times my size. I'm like, you should have used the numbers on the paper. Yeah. And because you are thinking otherwise, this is a result. So please just do the right thing. But I think I've confronted somebody once about body shaming. Because initially I used to be so sad and downtrodden about it. I wouldn't say anything and go and cry. But later on, I I really confronted people about it and said, look, it's unnecessary for you to talk about my body. <laughs> I am made up of so many things as a human being. My body is the most perishable thing. Exactly. So why is that the, the center of attraction to you mm-hmm. i am made up of body spirit and soul mm-hmm. and my body is the most perishable thing yeah so that should be the least of your concerns about me true true this is two madlings podcast uh we are discussing overcoming body shaming my guess is if you watch it we'll be right back after this break welcome back this is two madlings podcast kindly subscribe click on the subscribe button and the notification bell and we are still discussing overcoming body shaming with if you watch it 
So behind the scenes, Ufie said she wants to share a story about her being body shamed. Ufie, tell us a story. Yeah, so before the break, I spoke about it coming from family, mm-hmm. but then this time around, so one day I was at work going about my usual errands, you know, and then a colleague of mine at work, he uses a motorbike, and at work, motorbike is one of us <laughs> means of transportation. And before I used to be scared, but now I love it. Okay. It's nice being on a motorbike. Yeah. I know my life's at stake, but yeah, mm-hmm. I like it. So we went to Mama B to go and buy something, just a common brush, hairbrush. And we're on the motorbike. But mind you, anytime you're on the motorbike, people stab me a lot. Mm-hmm. On the principal streets of Accra, people stab me a lot. I think people smile and smile about it because, well, maybe it's admiration. So mm-hmm. yeah, I take it lightly. So we went to Mama B and we went to this shop. So when we are approaching the shop, shop and Mama was like, oh, overload overload wow. okay and the way he was yelling made people around also come and say hey and so people like this like five men yelling overload and this is the worst part of it mm-hmm. somebody brought out his camera to film wow. me on the motorbike this about two three months ago wow. and the unfortunate things i felt so unprotected because my my colleague who actually lives there in my mobile didn't intervene Wow. To say maybe that's unnecessary or don't wow. do that. And so I was very quiet and numb about it. So when I got home, being sad, I'm like, no. These people have no idea what mm-hmm. this body has been through. Mm-hmm. The bouts of pain I've experienced. Mm-hmm. And again, me, Dufi watch. I know I'm much more than my body. Mm-hmm. I have a good sense of humor. Extremely intelligent. Yes. Yeah. I am a kind person. Mm-hmm. I'm a good woman. My physical appearance has got nothing to do with who I am. And so it is their business, it's not mine. And I actually shared that story on my WhatsApp status, which I don't do usually. I mean, I don't share very personal experiences, but that could have been very troubling if I didn't speak to myself, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. pungently speak to myself. So yeah, body shaming is, is horrible. And again, in a community like that, if people are like, oh, it's Mambo Bito, don't matter. I'm like, it, it doesn't matter. They are human beings just like us living life. They they have they, they have a gray matter. They should think that, no, it's not right to a young girl you don't know, you know exactly. try to film me. So it's like, oh, once I'm meme with, I'm going to be a meme, maybe. Yeah. But it was, it was truly terrible. Mm-hmm. It was terrible. So when you come in contact with your abusers, have you put in place to question them, confront them, and also educate them? Because sometimes people need education. I feel people do things they do because they grew up seeing it and they have normalized things. So do you take the opportunity to say, okay, let me let me see this person now. Let me talk to this person about body shame. Have you tried that before? Yeah, so one, one of the things I noticed is that um, it would be hypocritical to say that I haven't passed a comment about somebody's body before. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. I haven't passed a comment about somebody's body. I don't know. I don't know the person personally. Mm -hmm. Okay. And even if I didn't know the person personally, there's a way to go about it. So, for instance, maybe I know you, Kojo. Maybe in my mind, I know that you've been trying Mm -hmm. to gain some weight. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, if I see you, I'm like, oh, Kojo, you actually gained some weight. That comes off not as uh, intimidating to you, but encouraging to keep at what you're doing. But I won't see somebody I don't know and pass the Gitchu comments about it. And frankly, I would say that I've not done very well in educating people personally. But what I have done is let people know that, listen, it is not necessary of all the things you can be talking about. A person's body is not necessary. And a person's body go through a lot of transformation yeah and this is even a great platform that you're sharing your story to the world Sh- yes sharing learn. my story i believe would um encourage people to you know trip off that topic exactly when you see somebody there are a lot of things that you can engage in that is fruitful to both parties but talking about people's bodies and again body shaming has led to death there yeah. are people trying mm-hmm. Um, things to lose weight or to gain weight that it, it ends up it ends up fatal. So that's my next question. How far have you gone into changing your appearance? 
Okay, so um, during the lockdown 2020, mm-hmm. I wanted to build some habits, and one of them was keeping fit. So I would um, log on online and then do 30 minutes workout. And for me, I, I, I began like to enjoy the workout so much, not because of the weight loss, which was the target from the beginning, mm-hmm. but the feeling after, the feeling of having accomplished 30 minutes because it's not easy. Yeah. So I used to like it, you know, every time I'll get up and do it. And now I went to Kumasi again, and then people were like, oh, you've gained so much weight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, uh, you exercise yeah. what are you saying? So it, it discouraged me mm-hmm. big time. But I think the farthest I've gone was to take this slim tea. Okay. And this slim tea is the, is the is the most bitter thing I've ever tasted in my whole life. Mm-hmm. And mind you, I lost weight in one week. You did this. Then the I tea? Realized, yes. Then I realized I know there's something wrong with this product. Because I didn't gain this weight in one day. Mm-hmm. Neither in one week. Mm-hmm. I've always been plump, as I said, but then I had some surgeries and I became bigger after. Mm-hmm. So I didn't gain this weight in one week for me to shed it off in one week. Mm-hmm. Again, this product I'm taking, I don't know the ingredients in this product. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It gives you this burning sensation in your stomach and it begins to run. Mm-hmm. I'm like, no, this is wrong. Yeah. It can have really adverse side effects. So then I start taking the tea. So mm-hmm. that's the farthest I've gone with um, trying to change my appearance for, you know, public acceptance. Mm-hmm. How can one um, overcome body shaming? It is not an easy journey. It's not an easy journey. But as I said, mm-hmm. you can't prevent, the, the extent to which you can prevent people from, sh- you know, body shaming you is limited. But what you can do is what I did in my Mamobi experience. Mm-hmm. The words I told myself made a difference. So from that from that moment at Mama B to my house, I was you know, distraught. But then when I got home and I'm like, look, you can't let these people's mere words, mm-hmm. you know, keep, you know, make you feel some type of way. Mm-hmm. That word shouldn't have an impact on the way you feel because of your body. So I think first and foremost, you have to have self conversations. Mm-hmm. It, it's true. I mean. If you are big, you want to be healthy. So you want to take steps to be healthy. But do it your way. Take the journey on your own. If you are lean, if you want, you are okay, lean, perfect. If you want to gain some weight, it's your own journey. It's nobody else's journey. But I feel like you can't go and tell somebody that you are too short to go tall. Yeah, 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 yeah. True. And you can't go and tell somebody you are too tall, so can you go short? Mm -hmm. And again, even with like being big, it can be a health issue. Mm -hmm. Last year, Shadow Boseman, when he died. Yeah. People were like, before he died, people were like trolling him, how have you gone so lean? But exactly. I was battling with cancer, he didn't know yeah, that. True, true. So you true. don't want it to be too late for it to come and, you know, now gather sympathy. Mm-hmm. Just leave people's bodies for them. It's not ne- negligence, they know yeah. whatever their bodies are, and they will rectify it when is the time. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Before we go, uh, your close room, I'm, I've enjoyed this discussion. Something that even sprang up in my mind that okay, we can't even do a whole documentary on body shaming. Certainly. Because I feel this is something that people don't usually talk about because when it's not affecting you, you don't really care. You don't care. Like in my situation, so that lady body shaming for being extremely skinny, I didn't care about I didn't care about body shaming. But you're incredibly handsome. I <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm handsome. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I want I want us to work on a documentary on body shaming. We should. We should. We, we should. should. So before you go, your close remarks. Um, what I'd like to tell our viewers and our listeners is that um, some things come impulsively, okay? Like passing a comment. You may not intend to hurt the person's feelings, but it will happen. When you see that the, 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 some people may not show it, but when you see that the comment that you pass, you know, hears them, do apologize, but try as much as possible to not talk about people's bodies. Mm-hmm. It's very personal. Yeah. This body is where our beings live in. It's very personal. The same way you cannot see somebody's friend say, why did you put this picture here, not there? The mm-hmm. same way you shouldn't pass comments like, why are you big? Why are you slim? Why are you tall? Why are you short? Desist from that. And if, you know, accidentally you do that, just apologize yeah and again if you are being body shamed it is hard trust me i've been there severally but you are okay just as you are mm-hmm. you are okay yeah don't 
don't mind them what they say you are not unintelligible for mm. being big because i've been called that because i'm big because yeah. i'm not making right maybe choices mm-hmm. health food but pick your own journey have your own goals and then meet them at your own pace yeah exactly very profound and i also say that people should be positive in life when i when, when i feel the possibility you don't go about shaming people you always go about helping people. You feel empathic towards people. And we live in a society that majority of people are very negative. Very, very negative. And negativity doesn't do anything. It rather destroys a lot of things. So try and put out some kind words. It, it's false nothing to be kind with your words. Words are very powerful. I do feel some handsome. I'm, I'm feeling really good right now. <laughs> yeah. So just give out kind words and encourage people. If you think that somebody is going to a, a certain direction that is bad, you can help them by being positive to them, by not targeting them and mocking them. That's okay, really awful. If I can check this in mm-hmm. quickly, now there's a whole community online, especially on Instagram, of really big girls trying to advocate for body positivity. Okay. And unfortunately, because of the heat and the pressure from the you know people, they are most of them are forced to tell the story almost naked almost naked mm. so you have you find like really big girls half naked say i'm confident i'm this which i always feel like some of them are exaggerating they're not mm-hmm. so don't be the reason why somebody even goes out of their way even morally yeah. to prove a point exactly and again people will pass comments like you are born to have diabetes and hypertension mm-hmm. well they're not going to take their bills from you yeah so, exactly i mean as you said support them if you think somebody is big and they can lose weight oh how can i help if you want exactly. to how can i help exactly. but then don't ostracize them exactly. for being some type of way exactly this is two madden's podcast i enjoyed this episode and see you next time next week new topic bye